Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to Mount Olive. So glad you could join us for worship today. This morning, the children of Mount Olive are going to share with us the promises that God made and the promises that God kept in the sending of his son, Jesus. We'll begin with our opening hymn as the children come on in called, O Come, All Ye Faithful. You'll find it on page three. Lord's blessings on your worship this morning. God's promise to send a savior was first heard by Adam and Eve the day they fell into sin. Later, the promise that one of Eve's descendants would crush the head of Satan is focused on the descendants of a man named Abraham.
However, there was a problem. Abraham and his wife had no children, so God promised them a son. In time, God kept that promise, and Isaac was born. God then promised Abraham that his son Isaac would become a great nation of people, that this great nation would receive a land of their own to live in, and that one of his descendants would be a blessing to all nations on earth. A reading from Genesis chapter 22. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from, his hev from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have, and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their, of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with a child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. You ever heard that prophecy before? I'm guessing you probably have. It's one that's focused on every Christmas. From Isaiah chapter 7. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel. That doesn't happen. <laughs> Virgins don't give birth to children. This, this prophecy is something that we focus on every year because this is what happened at Christmas. The virgin was with child and gave birth to a son. But I wonder if anyone in here knows who you was. The very first phrase in that prophecy, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Who's Isaiah talking to? One of the things that's challenging for us as Americans, when we look at the Old Testament, is we're not real familiar with the people and the places. And so you read through the Old Testament, you come across these names that you can hardly pronounce uh, of kings and, and cities and nations, and it's not your history, so you don't know who these people are, where these places are on a map, and it could be easy to get frustrated. Well, at the very beginning of Isaiah chapter 7, we're introduced to three kings that I'm pretty confident you've probably never heard of. But they're significant if you're going to understand what's going on in this prophecy. Listen to the, the very first line of Isaiah chapter 7. When Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, was king of Judah. That's when this takes place. Oh, now you know. <laughs> well, even though you've never heard of these, these people, they're significant because the people listening to Isaiah knew who they were. It was their history. They knew exactly who these kings were. And these three kings stacked up in succession were a grandfather, his son, and his grandson. The grandfather and his son, Uzziah and Jotham, they were kind of like King David. They were sinners definitely. But when they heard God speak, when they listened to the words of God and they heard him make promises, they generally just trusted him. They listened to what he said 
And when the Almighty, present everywhere, knowing everything God spoke, they listened. And when he made promises, they just trusted that he would keep them. But the grandkid, Ahaz, he was different. Ahaz heard the words of God, heard the promises of God, and basically said, no thanks. I'm strong enough. I'm powerful enough. I got this. Until one day, two enemy nations came and attacked Jerusalem. And I'll spare you who those nations were because it doesn't really matter for our purposes today. There were two nations that were teaming up against Ahaz's kingdom, and Ahaz and all the people in his kingdom were scared. And that's when the Lord does something kind of interesting. To this king who doesn't listen to what he says, to this king who does not trust God's promises, the Lord comes and makes a promise. Through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord says this to King Ahaz, be careful, keep calm, and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart because of these two smoldering stubs of firewood. This is what the sovereign Lord says, it will not take place, it will not happen. The Lord calls the kings of the two nations that are about to attack Jerusalem smoldering stumps of firewood. And he tells Ahaz, it will not take place. It will not happen. Like two bolts of lightning, God makes these two very clear, very specific promises to an unbelieving king and his people who are scared. What you're scared of will not take place. It will not happen. Don't believe me, doubting king? Test me. Ask me for a sign. Now that was interesting because God had told his people, do not test me. He had made it very clear. You might remember that when Jesus was on the earth, he was tempted by Satan. And one of Jesus's death blows to Satan's temptation was, it is written, and he quoted Deuteronomy chapter 6, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And maybe somewhere in the back of Ahaz's mind, he's remembering that command, and he's thinking to himself, wait a minute, this God once said, don't put me to the test, and now he's telling me, this must be a test, and I'm not going to put him to the test. So I'm going to say, no, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't test you. But ah, here's the problem. God just told him, Put me to the test. And Ahaz did the same thing he always did. He didn't listen to the word of God. Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. The Lord will bring on you and on your people and on the house of your father a time unlike any since Ephraim broke away from Judah he will bring the king of Assyria. In the Old Testament book of 2 Chronicles, we get the full history of what's going on here. Not only did Ahaz refuse to ask the Lord for a sign when the Lord told him to ask for a sign, he put in a favor with the most powerful king in the world, the king of Assyria, a man by the name of Tiglath-Pileser. Instead of trusting in God to save him from these two attacking kings, he reached out to a more powerful king thinking, huh, maybe he'll come and help. God says, you want the king of Assyria to come? Oh, he's going to come. I'm going to send him, and he ain't going to come to help. He's going to come to wipe you out. What's the lesson here? Ahaz doubts the words of God, rejects the words of God, doesn't trust the words of God. God says, you don't have to be afraid. I'm going to save you. 
And Ahaz says, I'm going to go to a powerful king to save me instead. And God says, no, not from a powerful man on a mighty throne, but from a virgin. That's where salvation will come. From the most unlikely source. You doubt me? You run off to the most powerful people in the world to solve your problems? I'm going to go to the most unlikely source to solve the problems of the world. A humble virgin. A young woman with no power whatsoever. I'm going to send salvation through her. God with us. Don't be Ahaz. Don't be a fool. Don't reject the words of God. Don't turn to human strength as if it could do anything for you. If you do, you will learn the same thing that Ahaz learned. Our God does not just make promises. He doesn't speak idle words. He keeps his promises every single time. Listen, as we hear our God keep the promises that he made. We join together in singing the hymn that's printed for you on page six of the Father's Love Begotten. We'll sing verses two and three. Verse 46 through 55. Many years after the promises made in the Garden of Eden to Abraham and to God's people through the prophet Isaiah, God's promise to send a Savior came to a virgin named Mary. She would be the mother of God's promised Savior. Listen to her song of praise following this amazing, amazing announcement. A reading from Luke chapter 1. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped the servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he had said to our fathers.
you just heard it read, and then we just sang it, these words of Mary after she has just found out that she is going to be the fulfillment of that promise that was made about 700 years prior. She's just found out that she's the virgin who will be with child, who will give birth to a son, who will be called Emmanuel. And she praises God. She says something amazing. Her spirit rejoices in God, her Savior. You see, Mary wasn't all that different from King Ahaz in the sense that just like you and me, she had this arrogant, sinful flesh that was inside her, inherited from Adam and Eve. But the thing that made Mary and Ahaz different is that Mary heard God's promises and realized they were for her. God's promises were to save sinners like her. And whereas Ahaz, in his foolish stubbornness, decided to stand on his own two feet and pull up his, his boots and, and get the work done himself, so he thought, Mary just trusted God. She realized that she couldn't save herself from her own sin. And she realized that this promised Emmanuel inside her own womb was her savior too. And she praises God. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. As Mary heard the words of God and listened to what they said about humanity, people like her, she came to realize that God's promises mean nothing to people who think they could take care of themselves. God's promises go in one ear and out the other of people who think they're strong enough, people who think they're wise enough, of people who think they have everything they need to get into God's kingdom. God's promises are worthless and mean nothing. And God scatters these proud hearts. He humbles them. But it's to the poor. It's to the people who have absolutely nothing to offer God who know that there's nothing they could do to get into God's kingdom because God in his word tells them this is so. You see, it's people who hear God's word and listen to what he says because in his word, God makes it clear, sinful, arrogant, prideful hearts like ours cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. It cannot happen. And so God promises. God promises that what is impossible for humans is possible for him. God makes a promise to save a world of sinners. It's to the poor. It's to the humble. It's to people like us who God shows through his word that we have no hope, that God shows our hope. The son of the virgin, Emmanuel, God with us. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. Salvation didn't come from a mighty king. It came from the most unlikely source, born of a virgin. God came to save his people. And Mary didn't know exactly how God would carry this out. She didn't know all the details of what her son would do and what her son would suffer. She didn't know that a humiliating cross lay before him, a death he didn't deserve. She didn't know exactly what the end of his story would be, a victorious resurrection from the dead. But she didn't need to know all those details because she had the promises of God. And that was enough. She had her God say, the poor will be fed. The humble will be lifted up. I have come to save my people from their sins. 
And he has. You and I have that same sinful, arrogant, prideful flesh that Mary had, that Ahaz had, that Adam and Eve had. But to foolish sinners like us, God comes and says, listen. Listen to my promises. See them fulfilled every time. In Jesus, you have the promises of God fulfilled. In Jesus, you have the same peace that Mary had. In Jesus, you have a Savior. Amen. We continue on singing, What Child Is This? You'll find it printed on page 9.
Please stand for prayer. This morning we include in our prayers a friend of Wendy Tischendorf named Maureen who is undergoing treatment at Mayo Clinic for lung cancer. We also celebrate with Dan and Jan McDougall as Jan has recently received some good news from a number of tests that she had been receiving and we thank God for, for good health. We pray. Eternal Father, throughout the centuries you repeated and affirmed your promise to send the offspring of the woman to crush the serpent's head. Through your prophets of old, you continually directed the eyes of your people to the advent of their Savior. We praise you, O Lord, for keeping your promise and sending your Son to destroy the works of the devil. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of our King, use your mighty word to shatter our pride and rouse us from spiritual slumber and apathy. Move us to take to heart the words of John. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. You sent your Son to redeem us from sin. Let this good news be our joy and strength. Use it to cheer the lonely, encourage the fearful, and give hope to the despairing. In these days before Christmas, spare us from the stress of deadlines and the frenzy of commercialism. Fill our lives with the message of your peace and the music of your grace. Direct our eyes not only to the manger, but also to the skies, where we will see your Son coming again, not as a lowly child, but as the Lord of lords. Lift up your hearts in joyful anticipation of that day. Great physician, we come before you today on behalf of Wendy Tischendorf's friend, Marine, who is being treated for lung cancer. We pray that you would be with her through the treatment she receives. If it be your will, we ask that there would be success to every treatment, that, that there might be health and life. But Lord, we ask through it all, you keep Marine focused on your sure promises. You don't promise perfect health to us here on earth, but you do promise us an eternal life that will never end, that will never again be scarred by disease. Lead Marine to trust your sure promises during this trying time. And, O oh God, giver of life, health, safety, and strength, we praise you for having granted Jan McDougall positive results on all of the tests that she's been receiving recently. We ask that you'd lead her to daily remember your goodness to her, that she may serve you with a life that reflects genuine thankfulness for all your blessings. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, and we ask you to hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, in your grace, in your power, and in your glory. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Gracious Father, we pray boldly as your son taught, with the confidence that you will hear us and with the faith that you will respond for our welfare. For it was your only son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn, Joy to the World.
Good morning to you all once again. So glad you could be here today. We do pray the Lord blessed your worship with us. A couple of announcements before we head out. There are um, bags of treats that were prepared for all the kids today. And even if your kids weren't up here, there should be plenty. Um, all the kids could take one on their way out. And if we have some left over, then we'll go oldest to youngest. So the oldest among us then can take treat bags home. <laughs> Justin and Lindsay Larson were blessed with a healthy baby boy, Manuel, Emmanuel Larson, calling him Manny. Um, we're going to do a meal train to try to support the family. There's all sorts of information available for that if you're interested in helping. Um, please do check the, uh, uh, the announcements in the email that went out this morning um, or on the news page of the website for more information. New Year's Eve, we will not have a service here at Mount Olive on the 31st. Our Thursday night, December 30th service and January um, 2nd service will be the same. Um, but the, if you want a specific New Year's Eve service, there's a list here of three different area churches that have those available. Um, one at Christ the King in Howard, one at Messiah over on the east side of Green Bay, and then St. Paul's down in the center of Green Bay. They're all offering New Year's Eve services. If you're interested in that, take a look. Uh, women's Bible study. There is an opportunity for the women of Mount Olive to participate in a Bible study coming up here. Um, it says here there's a deadline to order a book today. We'll make sure we have extras in case you miss the deadline, then you can come anyway. But if you're interested in coming, do order that, that book today. I um, would love to have you join the ladies for that Bible study. Um, it'll be Monday evenings and Tuesday mornings in case you don't want to be out in the evenings. FEL Christmas concert today, December 19th at 4 p.m. If you're interested in going out to Appleton, that's always a wonderful, wonderful concert. Thanks to everybody who helped out with the effort to, to bless so many families at the Barrier Life Center with Christmas gifts. Um, I, last I heard, they're almost all um, picked up already, so thanks to everybody who helped with that effort um, through last week. So Lord's blessings to you all in the week ahead, and Merry Christmas a few days early.
Thank you. 